you're in control. All right, it is seven o'clock. I would uh, like to uh, call to order this August 17th meeting of the Town of St. Andrews Planning Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, we all have the agenda in front of us. Um, I'm going to just first record attendance. Just note that, that uh, Chair Fleming is not here at the moment. He'll be joining us a little bit later. So at this point, I would look for a motion to approve the agenda. So Thank you. Do have a second there? Thank you. Any discussion about it? Or if you're if not, if you're ready for the question, all those in favor of adopting the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. aye. And uh, none opposed, so that is carried. Uh, at this point, any declaration of conflict of interest? I'll probably just put on the record that Mr. Fleming uh, has stepped away from the first agenda item um, with regards to the uh, 256 260 Water Street. Let's put that on the record. Anyone else? There being no more, thank you very much. We all have had the opportunity to read the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, that was July 20th when last we met. There are no questions, edits, comments, business arising. I'll look for a motion to confirm those minutes. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Second, Mr. Simmons. So those in favor, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of adopting those minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 And none opposed, that is carried very much. So going through the agenda, sorry, I just need to, I'm terrible at taking notes. Uh, no presentations or delegations. We do have a zoning application. Uh, this is in regards to um, an amendment to municipal plan MP 20201 uh, for property at 256 260 Water Street. And uh, do we have a presentation? Um, Madam Vice Chair, then I'll be presenting on this file tonight. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, thanks. Great. Great. Okay. We'll get into it. I'm sure this isn't uh, entirely new for every for everybody. Um, there's been some discussion in the community about this already. Had a public presentation and a public hearing with Council Monday night. <clears throat> Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that I think the design of the final development, if it gets that far, is still a little bit in flux. And really the question here tonight and the bylaw that you're being asked to give views on only really relates to the height of the building. And that's, um, in my mind, that's kind of the first step. And then if council, uh, um, I'll get to it, but, uh, really the, the bylaw MP20-02-01 is, is an exemption on height for this particular building. And I'll explain why it's not a variance, why this is a bylaw, um, all that. So oop, everything went wrong there. Background. So this is a three vacant lots currently, um, a former site of HMS transportation. And uh, there's a developer who um, I don't believe he actually owns the land yet, but he's in talks um, with the current owner and uh, has proposed a 36 unit, 12.2 uh, meter high mixed use development. So it would have retail on the ground floor um, and uh, apartments, the 36 units above. Um, if you're wondering about parking, uh, it's proposed to be underground. The reason why this is a bylaw and not a variance is that in the historic business district, which this property uh, or the properties are in, height is controlled by the secondary municipal plan. And because that's a municipal plan, it cannot be varied and requires amendment. Um, 
and uh, was brought up in the public hearing that um, as a municipal plan, this is this is should be taken more seriously than a variance, and I would would certainly agree with that. Um, so you can see the properties here; they're they're uh, encircled in, in the white. There, uh, two are in the central commercial zone. One is in the mixed use zone. Um, it's likely the properties would be consolidated before any development occurred. Uh, I think in St. Andrews, they actually would have to be, <clears throat> um, but that's that's still down the line. Uh, the, the really the question that needs to be answered first is, can it be higher than what's allowed? Um, I'll be totally honest, I didn't take a site picture because I don't think anything has changed since this picture was taken. Uh, the street view here, I think it's 2021. Um, it's, it's a vacant lot. Uh, that's pretty much it. Everybody's walked past it, I'm sure, many times. Now, because this is just a bylaw, normally we don't get into questions of design when uh, PAC's views are being asked for, but it is relevant in this case to take a look at, at sort of what's proposed. Um, and while there is still some design questions in flux, you know, what's, is it gonna be brick? Is it gonna be um, clapboard? Uh, what I think will not change, and I think what shouldn't change if this does move forward is the, the fourth floor, the extra bit of height uh, is stepped back. And that's what I wanted to show you um, is, is these renderings do show what that would look like from the street. It's a pretty common urban design technique to kind of hide some extra height. Um, you pull back uh, the top floor by a little bit. Um, I think in this case, it's it's uh, a few meters. And you can see in the renderings, it's, it's still visible, but it is um, less visible, less imposing than if it was uh, that fourth floor was all the way out to the edge of the facade. <clears throat> So I don't want to get too bogged down in the actual design, but I think that podium is, is very important. Uh, as always, look at the municipal plan policies. These are the municipal plan, not the secondary municipal plan that regulates height. Um, this is an excellent location to have uh, some more density. Um, it's incredibly walkable. Uh, and so it certainly meets that aspect of the uh, municipal plan. Um, yeah, right, right there. Uh, it would add some new businesses, um, you know, it would add some new retail opportunities. It would also uh, add some rental housing. Um, and as always, when these questions, when these types of projects are proposed, one of the questions is, you know, how affordable will it be? It's very hard to say at this point. Um, but I think given the location, uh, I wouldn't expect them to be super affordable, but that being said, there is a need for rental housing across the spectrum in St. Andrews for all socioeconomic classes. Uh, and yes, finally, you'll get at least two new retail spaces. Um, that is something the developer is very committed to is having um, commercial or retail spaces on the ground floor, which would be very important for this project moving forward uh, to retain the commercial streetscape of Water Street. So it is a good location for a new mixed use development. Uh, it's not a great location for a vacant lot. Um, now, whether this is the right project for that lot, that's that's another question, but um, vacant lots, especially in, uh, you know, kind of what you wanna see as a thriving downtown are, are not great to have there. Um, so having something there would, would probably be an improvement, but it does need to be the right thing. And the secondary municipal plan focuses on context. Um, and so the reason why this is needs a bylaw amendment is uh, the, the proposed height of the building does not match the context as it is laid out in the secondary municipal plan. Secondary municipal plan deals with what's on the block directly around it. And uh, you either need to be within a 10% average of the buildings on the block or um, basically match one of them. And 12.2 uh, meters is more than 10% higher than um, the average in any building on the block. That being said, there are some buildings around it that are as tall. I have a map in a second showing some of the other heights around it. So if you look at a slightly broader context, um, it does start to fit in a little bit more. The intent is really to have a consistent streetscape. Um, and thinking back to that podium, uh, as it's proposed, a lot of what would be seen from the street is 9.8 meters 
uh, that's the tallest portion of the setback. And then the 12.2 meters would be the um, kind of more of the central portion of it. So I've tried to show what that would look like compared to some of the other heights around. Uh, obviously, the Kennedy Inn um, is the tallest building in town at 14.7 meters. Uh, you do have an 11 and a half meter building across the street. That's um, the, uh, I believe it's the Masonic Hall. It's, well, now it's True Haven. Um, and uh, the uh, new, I think it's the Mallory Barn um, is 10.7 meters. So you do see some buildings on very close by that are around the 9.8. Um, and then if you look a little bit further, you do see the 12.2 uh, or some, some things a little bit taller than that. So this would be uh, the tallest building on the block. There's no question about that. And um, that's really what this, this particular bylaw is about. Now, the path forward, um, what I've recommended, and I think it's very important that if council does move forward with this, ensuring that this development is the right development for that spot um, and, and is a good use of that vacant lot, don't just exempt it from the height requirements or, or limit the height to 12.5 meters uh, as the secondary plan um, kind of notwithstanding other things does. Um, there's, there's a tool that the Community Planning Act allows called a development scheme bylaw. And in this case, this is important for a number of reasons. Um, it's basically a rezoning process. Um, so it goes through that same uh, public consultation, three readings, public hearing, views from um, PAC. And because at this point, the design is still very much up in the air, it's at that point that I think questions of design um, would be very relevant. Um, the other important aspect of the development scheme bylaw is that it allows council to enact a development agreement, which is not something that they can do um, with just a municipal plan amendment. Uh, for whatever reason, the Community Planning Act only authorizes development agreements in the cases of rezonings and zoning bylaw amendments um, and development scheme bylaws. So if council wants to be able to enter into agreement with the developer, which, which I think is very important, and I would not recommend the project moving forward without that, uh, a development scheme bylaw is, is really the only way to do that. And then you can include your timelines, uh, anything about stormwater management, um, servicing, uh, you know, if there's additional conditions on parking because of underground and, um, you know, there's potentially issues there, uh, could deal with landscaping um, and, and even financial securities and things like that. So I think it's very important uh, and, and if I have a recommendation, it's um, if the height exemption is going to be allowed, ensure there's a development scheme bylaw in place before that the, the bylaw you're giving views on tonight, MP20-02-01, is completed. Um, because that would ensure that council can be very involved in the design. Uh, they can ensure that they have an agreement um, that deals with all the things that should be dealt with, and and it allows for um, additional public consultation at at a time when design is more uh, finalized. I know that the developer has been going back and forth with the public. He seems very open to feedback um, and has made changes already based on that. Um, so I think the developer would be happy to have this additional kind of um, period where they can work with council, work with the public to ensure that the project. Uh, really meets the needs of the community, um, is fits into the context of the historic business district, and uh, is is good for the town moving forward. So I'll leave it there. Um, happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Gopin. So I guess at this point, uh, we're going to turn it over to the committee for comments. If anyone has any questions for Mr. Gopin, this is also a good time. Mr. Gopin, just a quick question about the Masonic uh, Hall building. They've added a, um, I don't know what you want to call it at the top. Yeah. What do you call it? Yeah. A copula. And, it's, mm -hmm. and it would look to me like it, it's probably like 
I'm just going to guess two meters. Is that, that's not part of the height of the building. That's above that building height, correct? Because people are asking me if that includes that or if it's the building itself. I believe that at the time when the LIDAR was taken for that, I think it was actually in 2018. Yes, um, okay. So I don't think that top part was built yet. Generally, those types of uh, turrets or chimneys or things are exempted from height requirements. Um, yes. So I did I did try when I made that map and looked at the other heights around not to include things like that and only to include the top of the roof lines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks. I also just wanted to just quickly acknowledge as well the letter that Mr. Knopper sent us from Mr. Greenaway. Um, it uh, it covers a lot of ground, but I just want to remind everyone that we're here tonight about the height. So although his feedback is awesome, um, we just want to make sure that we stay focused on what we're here to do. So regardless. Mr. Simmons, did you have something? Xander, so I get this right. So if we do a development scheme by law that, that huh? it's on. Oh, mine's on no i can hear i can hear fine <laughs> Sorry. yeah i know um so do you say then we don't talk about the height we let the de development scheme bylaw work with the height or we actually put in 12.2 meters is what they're asking for what so development scheme bylaws um they they override zoning bylaws, uh, but they wouldn't necessarily override a municipal plan. Um, so the exemption from the secondary municipal plan is important for that reason. It kind of allows a development scheme to say, okay, now we can play with that height and with other aspects as well. So that's where they would build the height in. If we set it at 12.2 tonight or suggested, or we suggest we put that height in the development scheme bylaw. Yes, you could I'm do just that. Trying to get a yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Xander, I just have one question. You talk about uh, discussion on context. Um, my concern is when we looked at those, when you showed the elevations of those, uh, the, the proposed building, there's no context there. It's like floating in space. My concern mm. is that. I know that we're saying, you know, there's this precedent across the block, down the block, or over the next street, but right beside it, what's that transition going to be like between the building and what's existing? Do we know? Yeah, well, I mean, I can't, uh, I, I am not, certainly not skilled enough to do those types of renderings in context. Um, I can go back to that map because it does show the height of the building next to it. Um, Just share my screen here because as, as you talked about having the the podium pulled back it's it's an urban design um uh trick that people do but also stepping back is another urban design trick that you do as well because i'm thinking if that building beside is is maybe it's i don't know maybe it's eight meters nine meters wall, tall and then all of a sudden you've got this wall that's coming up 12 meters high it's not a good interface between the two mm -hmm. So that's that's my concern right now. I, I don't want to see I want to see a good transition between the new build and what's existing along the street. So it is a consistent street scape. We have two streetscapes. Mm -hmm. really. Right. And it, it, you also have to look at the, the residential in behind. I mean, on this map, it's showing that that building beside is six to seven, seven to eight meters high. Yeah, I think that building, um, it's almost like a U shape and it has, uh, there's kind of a two story part with a patio. And then on the U kind of that goes around it, I think it is three stories, but it's a shorter three stories than, um, so the, the edges of it are taller. It, it's an interesting kind of uh, design in and of itself. I don't really think you can see the third floor from the street very easily. Yeah, 
Adam, if you're, may I ask another question? Absolutely. Take Thank away. you. Uh, Alexander, the new um, building that um, was built down across from Windsor House, do you remember how tall that was? Like, I'm just trying to wrap my head around 12.2 meters. That, because um, uh, it, it's one of the tallest there, it, it. Yeah. Um, I want to say 10 meters. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's just that, like, it, Frederick is 12.5. Is 12 .5. That yeah. does help me. Thank yeah. you very much, Madam Chair. Because the thing is, you have to, you have to look at it all as a whole package, right? Thanks. Just one other question. Sorry. Um, if we, as a committee, if we say, okay, we're, we're, we're comfortable with saying it's 12.2, they continue to work on the design and we're not really happy with what's happening can we can we pull back um i think what would be appropriate is as the design is worked on that would be part of the development scheme bylaw um and so that would come before pac as well that so that mm -hmm. at that point when that is coming before you the design should be finalized there shouldn't be questions of what it's going to look like so you would have the opportunity to give views at that point and if the committee feels like this is not good then certainly give views uh not in favor of it and you can say you know here are the issues we have with it but if he's trying to design it now and we make a ruling tonight he's going to design it to that as opposed to you know yeah. then it has to go all back through it again right yeah and if this paves the way for more cooperation and regulation through the through the development scheme bylaw, it will come before us again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It will live back and forth. Anyway, right now we're yeah. just talking about whether or not we want to yeah. exempt these uh, these particular items from section two, I believe. Um, where are we here? Uh, your chair you're looking at section 2.1.2.6 and there would be 6a b and c are the exemption requests if if i could ask is there any um situation where all of those conditions could be met uh will this happen more this is to be completely honest this is the first proposed amendment to this bylaw so it hasn't happened we've had development um in this area before and it's been able to um meet those conditions uh, meet one of them um when i've talked to the developer about and i think he's been pretty forthcoming with this in in the public hearings and public presentations he said uh, economically, the only way it can be a viable business plan is to have the fourth story. So that's that's what he says. Um, and uh, I mean, I've seen what the, the cost of the land is. So um, it was it was more a technical question about how the bylaw was written as to if, could, if anyone could comply, because there just doesn't seem to be. I, I would just expect to see ors after each of those points when three. Anyway, that's okay. That's just the way I read it. That's fine. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or did you want to just provide some? Madam Chair, I just I just want to give you a, a point here. So there was already the discussion on 131 Water Street on the height of that. Just note when it came to the secondary municipal plan with that, they were allowed to go 10% above Right. the height allowed on between because they looked at the height of both buildings you could either have gone with the average the exact same 10 percent above they went with 10 percent above 131 that's, that's where the, the as, is. that's the one beside the treadwell in that's right. the new yeah. building that was developed okay. there sorry just <laughs> there th that actually got a variance 131 water street because the secondary municipal plan was not in force yet at that time there were some it was kind of in play and so we looked at it and we had a condition relating to materials um there was something kind of similar in the zoning bylaw um but i think it went you pac well a prac at the time made the decision um 
Madam Chair, you were part of that probably. Um, but it was a little bit different, but it kind of kind of the same. Thank you. All right, so I will go uh, down the row here. I'll start with you, Mr. Ingalls. If you'd like, to, did you have some specific recommendations or observations that you'd like to provide? Um, I, I do have a little bit of concern about the height. And also, I'm just wondering, this is, as you just said, Sandra, this is the first time we've been using the secondary municipal plan. And all of a sudden, we're coming up and we're getting, we're, we're asking for a, uh, an exemption. And I'm wondering, so either the secondary plan is not really salient for what we need, or we're going to start getting a lot of these applications that are going to be pushing. So, sorry, that. just one one point there, Mr. Mills. The, the secondary plan has been in force for year and a half, two years. And this, sorry, this is the first amendment that's come forward in that time. OK, sorry. Um, yeah, it still feels like it's a new, it's a new, it's a new plan. Um, I, personally, I'm not that comfortable with the height, only because I can't see it in context to what's way beside it. I want to see what that interface is going to look like. That's my biggest concern. Uh, from both Water Street and from uh, Princess Royal. Those are my concerns. So Xander, we're only dealing with the height do we do we put in a part about the development scheme bylaw, or is that just going to be done naturally through council? Um, I think it's important that if there's a recommendation to move forward, that PAC does recommend to council uh, to ensure a development scheme bylaw. I think it's it's um, it's in my report. I've I've told council, um, but I think. That's important, and I think you could go further and say, it, you know, it would be good if it addressed these things. You don't have to, um, but that's kind of my recommendation. Okay, and so my other question will be: if we move forward in the September next development scheme for um, Raqqa when they put up in September. That's when the new open consultation is going to be with new mock-ups of the building and so on? So through you, Chair, uh, the, the goal would be the Rock, uh, Mr. Rocker would come and make a presentation to Council showing the new design concepts. At that point, Council would look at that debate the everything from what was heard at the public hearing of objections as well as what the, the opinions of PAC are and what the new design is. At that point, Council can look at whether they want to have more discussion or or another public consultation session or they could decide to direct staff at the next regular council meeting to bring forward a, a motion for reading there are, there are multiple avenues at this point that they that council can look at this okay so my other question leading into that so that one is that can a mock-up streetscape be done so it will actually show the size of the building next to the size of the building beside it or you know what i mean like a streetscape profile so that we can see it so that, you know, we can see the size against the old Stedman's building or the old Shore River Club, or we can see it against the Burgeons building in an actual, you know, conceptual drawing that will give us an idea of what it will look like. I don't know. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Technologic. Oh, let's go ahead, Mr. Knopper. Uh, I was going to say that might be a suggestion that could be a recommendation that goes as part of this and could be brought forward to the the developer to ask that uh, they've been very open to showing different designs and values. But if that is something that's to step it back for a better visual, that is something that could be brought forward. Yeah, it should be pretty easy. I mean, they have the rendering. It's just putting it in the. Yeah, so we can. Okay reality <laughs> i believe a similar move was made for the first iteration of, of this property yeah, development yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. hopefully you'll be able to hear me i apologize but my voice is 
gone tonight. Um, I also have some concern with the height of the building. And I know we talk about what's beside it, and we're talking about the Stedman's building, the old Stedman's building, and, and Burson's building beside. We also have to take into account the residential properties that are also along the street as well, because it's going to encompass some of those in, in effect. And, and this secondary municipal plan, I realize that the first time this came to the, to the table, this development or a development like this, uh, this wasn't in play. And since then, they've done, you know, a tremendous amount of work to come up with the secondary plan. They've done a lot of research and a lot of uh, uh, comparisons and things in order to come up with the regulations that they did come up with. And I just, I don't see that this is a good place to challenge it, really. I think uh, any exemption, maybe somewhere where you're not also abutting some residential properties might be different. But in this case, I just don't think it's the right place for right? making that exemption. That's just my two cents. Well, I sit, as you know, with two hats. So I have to, it's a very precarious spot that I sit in. Um, the first thing, and I understand your point about the second municipal plan, um, I just don't know how a PAC committee or a council can actually, they can put um, they can put whatever they wish on it. But as far as the height is concerned, where it went through the whole year's process before, and it was Mr. Jeff Holmes who sold, who was going to do the property. And I really feel it puts the town and it puts us in a precarious position simply because anyone's gonna say it went for 13.4 meters and it was approved. And Jeff Holmes was gonna build it with the underground parking. And this is falling shy, like one meter shy of what that was already dealt with. And I just don't know how well, like how much we can say about it because if it went through the whole thing of PRAC, went through council, went through everything else and it had opened, um, discussions I went back and read. I mean, it was uh, it was pretty festy, just like Monday night was, but it's still it still passed. So, and from an economic viewpoint, and we have a developer who's really really keen on satisfying everyone. So, I I sit on the fence because really I shouldn't even have a vote in this because the fact is it's not a conflict of interest. It's just that I sit with two hats and this is what I see. Like I see council's viewpoint. I see our PAC viewpoint. It's just that I worry that we open ourselves up to something of, well, how come they allowed it? And I realize it's the secondary municipal plan, but the thing is that building would be built now at 13.4. And so someone's coming in with 12.2. That's all I'm saying. And plus the fact that it's nine meters is what you're gonna see from the, from the street, like because it's gonna be brought back. So you're really looking at nine meters per se. I know the thing is 12.2, but it's going to be, when you look up at it, it's going to be nine, not 12.2. And so I feel that the, there's only four units on the top floor from what I've looked at and they're in the center and then there's the patios. So, you know, it, it, it really, in essence, and I mean, it's given us retail space that we truly do need. And it's and, and one of our big issues of everything else that we spoke about in PAC is parking. We don't have that issue with this building. It's underground. So there's no, none of us to say that the neighbors will have people on the street parking. The residents will be parking in front of my house. Like there's none of that. If, the, if it didn't have an underground parking, was gonna be on top ground parking, I truly would have an issue because it would have 37 cars. It's gonna put 37 parking spots underground. Wheelchair accessibility, place for students, first floor. I mean, it has a lot of pluses that we need in this town. And what is a meter when you get down to it? If we whittle them down to 11.2, what's a meter? It's not a lot. So that's how I sit on the thing. 
And it, it's just because, as I say, I'm in a delicate position of sitting on two hats. And yeah, and it makes it hard, but you have to take into account that the town it's something they need because if we have these units, and I've been told they're $1,930 for the four units on the top floor, that's what the price is going to be. But if we have residents here in town who like living in the plat, but they can't, they can't keep up their houses, then we have more open houses because no one, they won't sell? No. Yeah, but I'm just saying, so when you look at it all, in all mm -hmm. respect, and the tax base that it brings to the town, because I'm just using an example, our wharf price went from 5.5 million to 8.7. And like, we're not going to make it if we don't have a tax base. And if we're talking a meters different, is that a big deal? That's all I'm saying. I think the you know the context from from council is important. Yes, um, I I think that I I went to the meeting on Monday. Yes, you did. I saw you. There. Um, and I thought I thought that the 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 issues that the audience was there to to bring forward were all perfect relevant. And yes, they were professionally presented. Um, we we're here to talk about you know a, an issue that they brought up as well. That's right. An outright exemption. Right. Um, from from a clause in, in a, a fairly new document plan. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that's tough. And I sat at the back of the room thinking, wow, you know, how can they do that? But what I hear is that it it, it paves the way for mm -hmm. us to make a recommendation on this development mm -hmm. scheme. And it allows the town and the developer to to stay in very close contact with regards to compliance to bylaws. Mm -hmm. Like they maybe they won't need the seven variances that the previous project did you know mm -hmm. I, I just think it gives Correct. the town a little bit more uh, ability to stay involved shall we say and madam chair whatever we decide here this does not mean it's dead this is Absolutely. this is just no, it, that's right but yes. if we decide to go with this there are more hoops and and it will come back because whatever we, if we say we'll agree to the 12.2 if it doesn't meet as you said, Madam Chair, all of the requirements and all of the things, it can stop it at any time. And that's why it's important that we get that, uh, that whatever they call it, what is it? Uh, uh, um, enact development or the, the development yeah. scheme bylaw. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So all we give this, but then if, if it doesn't work, it comes back. That's, you know, I mean, we're, we haven't even picked a rock off the ground yet there, <laughs> even doing this. <laughs> so no, I know it's been, it's been tough. And I think, you know, Mr. Golden said it, uh, it, it's certainly not the greatest space for um, a vacant lot. I think that yes. was said about the, the building or the lot beside the treadmill for many years, mm -hmm. that they're vacant and a hole in the ground. And I, I think that uh, what's there now blends in. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible. To harmonize about well, that's what I say. Yeah. Um, but what I'm hearing is that we have concerns about mm -hmm. an outright exemption, and I think if we can reconcile that, we can. Um, we can probably move forward. But we're being asked, you know, do we recommend that they proceed with this amendment or not? Um, so, with the concerns that I've written down, um, you know, we are concerned about the first amendment uh, to a relatively new municipal plan. Uh, we've also expressed the need uh, for some more uh, context uh, with regards to the streetscape, maybe ask the developer to step back his renderings and, and uh, include it more with uh, a little bit more of the town block. Mm -hmm. am, am I hearing you all correctly? Thank you. Stop me if I've, uh, if I've misunderstood something. Um, and then is, again, back to the exemption, is this the right, the right place, the right project? Um, Mr. Heenan was was um, astute in his comment that previous uh, approval was for fourteen point four meters, and and uh, that did include the the podium type design that we're talking about here tonight as well. Um, so those are the concerns that I've written down. Um, did anyone want to express? Just with and and. No offense, no. Councillor Heenan. No, absolutely. But anyway, not. but but you say I know we said that yeah we we approved it before, and now because the the secondary municipal plan wasn't in place, and now that it is, we've got something else on the table. 
Well, that's no different than if the zoning bylaw changed and something happened and we were in the same sea. You know, we've approved it before, but now we don't approve it. So it's, you know, it's kind of the same scope of things here. We're talking, you know, it's just because it wasn't in place before doesn't mean it's not in front of us tonight. That's right. So. And, and the height, the height variance uh, last time was one of seven. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, maybe it was the lesser of, of the evils. So, but anyway. So I just wanted to, I guess, get a sense. What are what are we saying in addition to our concerns? Are we saying these are the concerns and so we are uh, not recommending proceeding? Or are we saying that we're recommending proceeding as long as we keep this development scheme mid- agreement and its conditions in mind? Because I don't think yeah. that we're really, we're really setting anything in stone, Madam Chair. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it gives the developer an opportunity to see our concerns. And I have them, like if I was, if I was sitting in an audience and someone gave me the permission, yes or no, I wouldn't let it go. So uh, I'm not there. I'm just trying to be the devil's advocate that, you know, if, if we have somebody which you don't often get, that's willing to make changes, and has done so, and has done so publicly, and has done so with the public, and responds personally to, I mean, you've got somebody on the hook, that's, that's, well, that's a, I feel that's good. He's building relationships with his neighbors. That's what he's doing. And I mean, be it, that he didn't have to, he didn't have to, (laughs) he can say, like he said at our meeting, you know, he said, and he brought it right up, he says, it's my money. And that is true. It is his money. And we as a town are giving him nothing. There's another thing you have to take into account. There's, there's, I mean, there might be some infrastructure, but we're giving them no land. We're doing nothing. And this guy is willing, and he's willing to work with the neighbors. He has addressed all their concerns and is willing to change the texture of the building. Like, I've asked him about the heat pump. And he has sent me how they work. It's not going to be outside, no noise. So he has taken the time to come to me and tell me and show me the design of this machine that's going to heat and cool each unit without noise outside or without machinery outside on balcony. Because I think that's tacky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when you have people who do that, yeah, I have to give them the benefit of the doubt that they'll follow whatever our recommendation or try to do the best. So that's how I think. Thank you. Anything from this side of the table? I guess I need some kind of motion before we can <laughs> proceed. I've got a lot of notes here and I um, I just, uh, I, I believe that they all need to be incorporated uh into our into our opinion mm-hmm. um but it's whether it's up or down i guess that's the motion i'm looking for well i'm not sure why there can't be a motion or i guess just to, just to record our to record our observations that's I guess. Ma- madam chair you don't have to say yes or no you can just provide your opinion as okay. what you have listed you yeah, don't have to say yes or no just your, you can list that if you wish so much for that clarification. Because that helps a lot. I will. Okay. So I am going to uh, put at the very top uh, that we highly uh, suggest and uh, hope for a development scheme agreement. In order to proceed, uh, so it, we want that development scheme agreement to um, certainly address uh, things like the streetscape. We want some more context, um, so pull back on the rendering so that we can actually see what it looks like. Um, and then uh, we just also wanted to provide feedback that we do have concerns about the outright exemption um, to this uh, to this area of the municipal plan. Um, but that we understand that it paves the way for the development scheme agreement. Mm-hmm. Uh, did I miss anything? Perhaps also uh, say uh, appropriate transitions between bill form and new bill form. So that will sort of, it's not going to dictate how you 
but it will sort of inform it. So appropriate transition between built form, existing built form, new built form along Water Street. We're gonna get into the drawing already. So that will show, but that will that will be that will be shown that, that, will that show elevation. Us, and that elevation form. is shown. Do you all remember when we were growing up when Montreal was um uh, was uh, <laughs> was coming to like Montreal downtown and you'd come and you'd go way they and, still haven't finished building that place. And you and you'd look way up and you'd think, oh my to show the transition between new and old buildings. All right. I can live with that. Have I covered up all of that? Okay. If and I so, think it looks very nice that we're that we're taking the time to do this and that we can talk it out rationally. And, yeah. and uh, I mean, everyone's opinion can be heard, and that's perfect. Part exactly. Of so. I don't often take this many notes, that. so that's good. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. yeah. Recommendation. yeah. yeah. Yes. Through you, Madam Chair, you would you would still need a, uh, a mover and a seconder and and to motion it through yeah. as those as your opinion as so we this. Keep we keep talking streetscape, water street. But we also have to have remember to we have to, we're on a corner lot, so we have to remember the, the other side too. Yeah. And, and you're right, because being a corner lot, it needs to be strong on that corner. And really, that's the last corner so of, water that, and of the corner store. That's right. That's that's where it ends and has to transition correctly. That's right. right. Yep. Yes. That's that's probably more important than the I rest of it. I was just going to say. That's really? More important yeah. than Truly. I, yeah. Because my that's where my issues become into effect, right? I become part of the development. Yes, agreed. Yeah, yeah. they would also have to do that. Okay. But the important that's part is we're having saying. Prince's yeah. Royal is far more important because of we just said we, the transition that it did right. walking you're, down water. You're transitioning into a residential that's right. neighborhood then. Yeah. That becomes completely different. Yes. Okay, so I am looking for a motion then. Um on these concerns that I've written down and repeated to you. I'll make a motion that we send these recommendations to the council as they work toward developing an agreement with Bridal Path or, or whatever it is. Bridal Path Holdings? Yeah. Bridal Path International. Bridal Path International. Thank you very much. Yes. Second? I don't mind seconding it. The no, it wasn't close. Right. It's close between here. All those in favor of providing council with our observations and comments, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Um, very much. Please. Bang your gaps. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, we're, we're not, not over. over. Oh, we're not over. <laughs> we got two more. Yep. I thought one was pinched. What's the best? The one that never was. Amendment to our rules and regulations. It's a good information for the fans. That's Not everybody does. <laughs> not <to> this <laughs> I'm not packing it up. I'm not here. I've had counsel and packing one week. Don't be downtown for a You're right, Paul. Are you working remotely? <laughs> Well, 
supporting the best changes. Right? Good. Appreciate that. Did you uh, lose that flavor? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, that's fine. Don't know how we need to stick up. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. So, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Getting us to the first part of that would mean that we have arrived at variance application section three, the variance in terms of additions application for 140 Mary Street fence request. Uh, Self to that point, and we have a planning report from Ms. Pung. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and welcome back. Let me share my presentation with all of you. All right. So we had some interesting conversations on a municipal plan. Now we get to have a look at a variance and terms and conditions application for a fence. This is file number PAC 220804. So um, just apologize that um, the file number on the report is wrong. Uh, this, is, this should be 04 instead of 01. All right, so this is a application for property at 140 Mary Street. It is on the zoning map on the right. This property is zoned as serviced commercial, uh, not serviced commercial, serviced residential, and it is on the last block in Town Platte as well. What's being proposed here is a four foot fence on the property line, and it's also going to enclose the front portion, front half the uh, property. So here is a de more detailed scan of the fence. Uh, we can see the existing structures on the property, which is a house, garage, all that. Uh, the proposed fence is indicated by the oops dotted lines in the front yard and part of the flankage yard. Um, the portion highlighted in blue means that those portions are on the property lines. So on the property line on Mary Street and on the property line on Parr Street. Most of the fence will be chain link, as you can see in the reference image over here. And a little portion between the house and the Mary Street um, portion will be this barred style wrought iron fence with a gate. Um, so this project, this fence project, will require two different planning considerations. One is terms and conditions, because it is over 3.3 feet in height in the front and flankage yard. Um, so it needs terms and conditions according to the zoning bylaw. The second planning consideration is uh, two variances. Uh, one is obviously because if it's reduced setback, it will be put on the uh, property line, so it doesn't meet the minimum setback for a fence. The second variance to be considered is because part, part of the fence will be located in the site triangle. The site triangle is indicated by this red dotted circle on site plan. So structures in a site triangle shouldn't be over 3.3 feet in height. This fence will be four feet, so it needs a variance. Uh, so these are two separate planning considerations. Um, there will be two, there will be a recommendation for each of the considerations. So just to let you know. All right, so let's look at the terms and conditions first. Um, in the St. Andrews zoning bylaw, it provides guidance for the planning committee when applying terms and conditions. So PAC should consider number one, properties within the zone or in abutting zones. Number two, the health and safety and welfare of the general public. And number three, the integrity of the objectives and policies established in the municipal plan. 
So those are something important to consider when we apply uh, when we apply terms and conditions. Staff also consulted the town's public works, works staff who provides comments on um, the water and sewer lateral infrastructure in ground. Essentially, they want to make sure that those infrastructure would not be interfered by this fence installation. So based on those information, staff provided three recommended terms and conditions. Number one is that the applicant shall be responsible for locating the water and sewer lateral and ensuring that those lines are not damaged during fence installation. Number two, the fence shall be built with see-through high quality materials as presented in the development permit application and the fence shall be properly maintained to not become a hazard to the safety of the public or become dilapidated. This condition actually ties to the variances being uh, requested that we will talk, we will um, discuss shortly. Uh, the third recommended condition is that no fence shall be electrified or incorporate barbed wire or other sharp dangerous materials in its construction. Again, this is just a standard requirement for all fences. Now let's talk about the variances. Um, so there isn't much about fence in the zoning uh, in the municipal plan and a secondary municipal plan. Uh, the only place that mentions a fence is in the secondary municipal plan under best practices. So it says when delineating property boundaries, either with plantings or fencing, the highest quality materials should be selected. Um, this is a best practice. This is a best practice, which means highly recommended, but not mandatory. Um, this has already been addressed in one of those recommended terms and conditions. Uh, staff also has some discussion points um, for PAC's consideration in regards to the two variances. Number one is uh, regarding streetscape. It is important to make sure that this fence uh, will be able to fit in the existing streetscape. Staff did a site visit and believes that this will be consistent with what's already in the neighborhood and in a town plat. Here are some examples. So this is a property not far from 140 Mary Street on Park Street. So you can see they have some pretty tall plantings on the perimeters. Um, that's pretty close to the street, to the property line. Here's another property that's across from 140 Mary Street on Mary Street. Again, it's another perimeter fencing. This one is a bit hard to see, but it's also a perimeter fence that's also a chain link fence um, a couple of blocks down on, on Par Street. Um, it's sort of hidden under those trees, but it's there. And here's another chain link fence behind a house in Town Platte. I believe this is in the flanked yard of the property. So the point is allowing a fence to be put on the property lines and being a chain link fence won't be a rare site in the neighborhood um, and certainly won't be rare, uh, won't like stand out much in, in the town plot. So it's quite consistent with what's already there. Uh, the second point of consideration is about right of way um, because we have to make sure that when, um, once the fence is there, there's still enough space for town to carry out its public services like plowing snow, um, such and such. So here's a picture of the corner of the property. Um, you can sort of see a stake at the corner of the lot there. That's um, roughly where the two lot lines should meet. Um, so as we can see, there's still plenty of space between the road pavement and the property lines. Um, and there's also a big ditch, so plenty of space plenty of space to plow snow and store those snow in the summer, oh, sorry, in the winter. Um, so there shouldn't be a problem, a, a big problem allowing the fence to be put on those property lines. And the next consideration would be for safety because one variance is about allowing the fence to be slightly taller in the site, site triangle. So the intent of the height restriction in the side triangle is to make sure that nothing obstructs the line of vision in that area. Because it's really important that when you're turning at a corner, um, you're able to see what's coming and where you're turning. So in this case, this fence 
being just slightly taller than what's allowed. So it's only 0.7 feet taller than what's allowed. And it's also a highly transparent see-through fence. There really shouldn't be any significant obstruction to the line of vision. So again, uh, it shouldn't cause any significant safety concerns if we allow this fence to be placed. Um, so all in all, staff believes that the two variances are reasonable and are consistent with the intent of the regulations. So staff recommends that the Planning Advisory Committee of the Town of St. Andrews approve the following two variances. Number one is a variance of 3.3 feet to allow the fence to be located on the property lines on Mary Street and Park Street. So this one is regarding the reduced setback. And the second variance is about um, being located in the site triangle. So it's a variance to allow a four foot chain link fence to be located in the site triangle on Mary Street and Park Street. So that's the end of my presentation. I believe Paul has received a letter from the public. So that's also something for PAC to consider as well. Um, if there are something that PRAC thinks are important and should be addressed, you can certainly uh, amend my recommendation, change it, add more, you know, whatever PAC thinks that will um, fit the situation. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's it. Hung, does anyone on the committee have any questions for the planner? Mr. Chair. Yes, Councilor. Um, Mr. Chair, um, I just had, uh, thank you, Ms. Vivian, you answered my question. The big ditch was a positive, was a big one for me because of the snow removal. And the other concern I have is, uh, Mr. Knopper, will they be given a plan of the infrastructure that they could be seeing when they're putting the fence posts in? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, generally speaking, we would have a staff member on site that would indicate where the the infrastructure is and would mark it out prior to the installation of the fence. Thank you, Mr. Knopper. Thank you, Ms. Gibbons. Anyone else? If not, uh, Mr. Knopper, do we have the applicant? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, no, we do not. Okay. That's fine. So uh, we have, uh, do we have anybody else who is willing or is, is wishing to make any comment regarding this matter? Uh, through, through you, Mr. Chair, I'll put it out to our, our viewers. Um, uh, one of them is CAO Chris Speer, who's watching. Uh, but Mr. Dominic Blange, if you wish to speak to PAC, please raise your hand on your Zoom. One last call, Mr. Belanger, if you have any questions or would like to comment, please raise your hand. No comment. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, committee, that brings us to uh, our motions. That we do have them divided in two. There are terms and conditions, as you see, and also variances. So we'll address the terms and conditions first, of which there are three that have been recommended to us. Does someone wish to move? Yes. Was that the only letter in the polling that we got back, Paul? Through you, Mr. Chair, that was the only letter. One additional question did come in. It was the question of what would the fence look like and was told to the person that it is a chain link fence. And that's and that was it. Yeah, that was okay. So does someone wish to, to remove what has been recommended to us or a variant thereof? Mr. Chair, I'll move that the uh, Planning Advisory Committee accepts staff recommendations uh, and apply the three uh, terms and conditions as indicated on the planning report. Do we have a seconder for that? Oh, hands, Mr. Cross. Okay, so <laughs> yours just a hair. Councillor Heyman? All right. Uh, any discussion on the motion? If not, if you're... I have a question. Oh, yes. Sir. Uh, sorry. Um, so recommendation number two, high quality material. And and the the, the, the applicant is proposing changing the case, correct? Now, 
here, here comes the question then, does quality refer to appearance or does quality refer to the actual physical uh, opposition of the uh, durability of the pants? Mm -hmm. So pretty subjective. Well, that's true. It's very subjective. Yeah. It is, and I, I know that, that that in the presentation, there's we've seen different examples of the use of uh, changing flints. But if you note, and as as the the town staff has said as well, you can hardly even see in one or two of those instances chain link fence because there's planting all through there. Um, it's just, it's, I know we've had fencing issues before. We've had them come up. Um, I've had a, a discussion with, uh, with town staff about it before as well. Um, I just feel that the aesthetic of a chain link fence is, is not the best thing to be shown everywhere around town. Well, well, I would kind of disagree with that. Rather than having fishnets and everything that else that people use as fencing uh, and uh, lures from the fishing department and everything else that's around, at least a chain link fence is put in, if it's installed properly, and that's an if, uh, at least it's straight and it's strong. And it and when I think of a chain link link fence, I think of like we're going to have a dog park and it's going to have chain link fence. And we've had them come in and it's it's quite nice. Um, what I oppose to is if they want to put up a fishnet fencing or something like that that can fall down or the deer run over it and they get they get uh, trapped in it. It's inhumane. A uh, chain link fence there will be no trapping of a deer because they won't penetrate it. So <clears throat> I'm for the chain link myself personally, but that's just my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There certainly are a lot of fences going up around town and I, I, I do understand I'm one of those people that has deer netting everywhere because I could never afford a fence around my yard. But um, um, I think that the, the quality that we're seeing and it, I mean, at least they're coming for a permit, which is uh, also kind of nice. Um, uh, the fences that I've seen of late, I think are, are very sympathetic to, to aesthetics. Uh, well, while protecting their property. So um, I'm, you know, it's the lesser of two evils. Right. Any further discussion? If not, I think we're ready for the question. All those in favor of accepting the three terms and conditions signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. Okay, we have one nay ordered. Motion is carried. We go to the two variances which have been requested on this proposal. You have the motion there before you. Does someone wish to move as documented or a variant thereof? Well, I would move it as just for discussion purpose. So supplied, move it, Mr. Chair. All right. Councillor Heenan moves. Is there a seconder for that motion? I'll second it. Okay. Stuart, discussion on the variances. If not, if you're ready for the question, all those in favor of the motion to adopt these two variances signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded. One nay recorded. Motion is carried. All right, that, tea, that deals with that particular item. And we move now to new business, which as I indicated to you in last month's meeting, I was going to be looking for a rewrite on the rules of operation and procedures, item number 37 because of the fact that 
as written currently, it seems to give us more powers than are granted under the Community Planning Act. I sent you a briefing note. You've also received a note from Planner Henderson on this matter. Is uh, I don't know who's with us this evening, Mr. Knopper. Uh, uh, we have all three planners. We Actually, have we have three. Mr. Gopin, Mr. Henderson, and uh, Mr. Henderson. Okay. Um, and Mr. Henderson is coming on here, as I can see. Okay, good. Because I did want him to his note. Um, I found it, well, let's say intriguing. I just wanted to get a little bit more <laughs> of a get a little bit more of a of, of an angle, perhaps on that uh, of what was actually intended. Um, anyway. So, uh, Mr. Anderson, if if you could uh, if you could just address your note to us a little bit, I I'd, I'd like to get some clarification. Uh, sure, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and the PAC. Um, if you can hear me uh, well enough, uh, could you let me know? Okay, what just happened? Go, go ahead, and Alex, if you're good. Okay, I just don't have my video on tonight uh, because my camera is not working, unfortunately. But uh, if you can hear me, that's that's great. Um, so the letter I sent to you was regarding um, giving notice for PAC files that you guys uh, hear. Um, <clears throat> there's been a question, and I understand you have deliberations about uh, whether or not to give notice. Uh, um, as per your uh, rules of operation procedure, uh, when it comes to, um, let's say, a rezoning application, uh, should you be required to uh, give notice? Um, and this is something which um, we have um, some experience with with the regional, uh, the PRAC. Um, it's something which we've done in the past, but have since discontinued doing. Um, there's a reason for it because it's not in the Community Planning Act. Um, for the PRAC or PAC, as in this case, to be doing um, a notice for rezonings uh, so as to hold a second hearing of objections. Um, it's a power um, and that the public portion of that decision-making process is really um, held by council. And when it comes to PAC's uh, responsibilities to give notice, the only time the act ever uh, even mentions it would be in case of a variance to a zoning bylaw or a subdivision bylaw. So when it comes to best practices, what we often do is look at the guidance that comes from the provincial community planning branch um, that's head by the provincial planning director. Um, and the guidance they provide on giving notices um, really uh, really uh, just specifies the different instances you might want to consider giving notices above and beyond Community Planning Act. Uh, they don't give any guidance to, to give notice when it comes in the case of a rezoning, something that's going to be heard by the minister in the case of a, a rural unincorporated area, or is going to be heard by council in case of municipality. Those are for council um, to do through a public uh, hearing of objections. But the minister, or sorry, the uh, community planning branch does recommend you go above and beyond the act to give notice in cases where you're making a decision. So variance, of course, because it's referenced in the act that you have that power to give notice before you make a decision on variance. And the courts really would um, urge you to consider that power that you have to give notice very carefully. There would be very few instances where um, that you might want to not do that and it would be probably in the most minor instances which where staff can use their powers to provide minor variances um but it'd be, and only in the most uh, non-controversial sense so the power to give variances or the sorry the power to give notices for variances is an empowerment it's a may give notice when it comes to any other decision that you're making the, the provincial branding branch does recommend you do community notice and it would follow that if it's a decision that you're making at that night 
uh, unlike a view when you're providing the council for their consideration when they're making the decision, like in the case of a rezoning, if PAC is making the decision, it would follow that you should be considering to give notice to neighbors before you do so. So if that's clear, um, I, I get happy to discuss or take questions about that. The only thing that's the only thing that's bothering me is you keep using this phrase "give notice," whereas we're talking about polling. Do you mean the same thing when you say "give notice"? Or yeah, sorry, just I guess the different uh, ways of describing it. Yes, so you're going to if you're going to be giving notice, I would think of it this synonymous as polling. Okay, okay, good, good. That that's what was throwing me off. It was, it was just that the use of that phrase. Um, okay. Now, uh, Mr. Henderson, have you seen the text that I think the staff was responsible for providing as a possible rewrite to this section 37? Yes, I have. Okay. And what is your opinion of it? No, I, I, I think it's a, it's a good path forward. Um, I would, uh, I would have no objections ex other than maybe just clarification on the one uh, regarding um, give uh, notice or polling related to applications for signs. I think that's sufficiently covered in the cases of uh, variances or um, temporary uses, because you can do temporary use type signs. But um, as long as that's understood, that that's, uh, that's how you'd be polling for that kind of file. My, my only my, my only to the, the committee, the, the committee, Problem with. I'm, I'm hearing extra voices. Extra voices. <laughs> you might be getting it through his feed. His feed. Sorry about that. <laughs> All righty. Um, my my only my only quibble uh, with the text that was provided here was that last paragraph, which which again gets us into the weeds of of. Do do we do this? Do we not do this? And as far as zoning and so on, I don't know whether it needs to be stated, but I will leave that up to to your consideration. I I'd be just as I'd be just as happy to leave that last paragraph off, but if you're okay with it, I'm I'm not really considerably worried. I'm just wondering whether somebody's going to get into that and try misinterpreting it um, as to just a plain statement. Look. We poll for variances is basically what we're what we want to say, and I think the the preliminary paragraphs there do a fine job of that without necessarily including that last paragraph. So, anyway, uh, I've done enough yapping. I'll turn it over to uh, you people and say, do, do you have any particular considerations um, that spring to mind on this issue? Uh, no, I, I fully agree that the last paragraph might muddy it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, I'm, I would be glad to align the verbiage of our of our operating rules with with the Community Planning Act. I think that's yep. uh, super important. Um, yeah, I think that was my concern tonight was we had not addressed this rule yet. And I was afraid that if someone wanted to present tonight, I would anyway. Yep. Didn't happen. Didn't matter. So. Yep um yeah i'm pleased that went well for you yeah okay uh anyone else all right i will look for a motion then on this text to substitute for the currently existing section 37. i would so move that with the uh, removal of that last paragraph from okay. the recommendation thank you mr cross is there a seconder I'll second that. Okay. So the motion is to adopt the text that we have before us provided by staff with the removal of the last paragraph. Correct. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, if you're ready for the question, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary. That motion is carried, so we have a new section 37. Thank you very much to staff for having prepared that. It saves a lot of fussing and flapping. Um, 
Well, we get that, Mr. Chair, and yeah, so well, we can add it we to would, our books. Yeah, so we'll get yeah. A, a new version. Yeah, through at your next PAC meeting, I'll ensure that there's a new copy included in your package. Okay, and secondly, no, she's, was I the only one that didn't get a copy in my book of the secondary municipal plan? Well, I think you must have been because I'm quite sure that I had. Okay, I just I couldn't find it in my book. That's all. Anyway, just one of those funny little things, I guess. Okay, uh, is there any further new business or comments from the committee? Yes, Councilor Heaney. Um, Mr. Chair, I hear it's your birthday coming up and <laughs> I, would, I would just like to, on behalf of the PAC committee and council, wish you a very happy birthday and hope that, that you have a good day, Mr. So Chair. Coming up, 23rd, Tuesday. All right. Well, if that is the uh, extent of business for this evening, I will declare this meeting at an end. Bye, folks. Happy birthday, Mr. Chair. Thank you.